All right, guys. Uh, here's the question that I wanted us to look at <coughs> regarding the the forces that we did. Uh, the question says, calculate the resultant in magnitude and direction. Remember, forces are vectors. They should have magnitude. They should have direction. And then the other question says, determine the equilibrium. Now, from last time, we said uh, equilibrium is the force equals to the resultant but acting in the opposite direction okay so this one usually to carry less marks just for this part to carry less marks maybe about two marks or even one this is the one that will carry about maybe six marks or so because there's a lot of work that needs to be done if we get a question that just says determine the equilibrium then it will carry all the marks uh the six probably and also the two you'll be having about eight marks on one question now when we look at this to answer the first question, when you look at the questions that we, the forces that we have, we have three forces. We have the 10 newtons, we have the 30 newtons, we have 70 newtons. And these three forces, they are different. This one is an oblique force. An oblique force has got two components. It is always at an angle. It is going upwards, as at the same time it is going to the right. It has got two components. So like we said, this one, we, we, we have to convert it to the horizontal component and as well we have to convert to the horizontal component. For this 30, this one is a direct force. It is going straight to the east or to the right. This one is also a direct force. It is also going straight downwards at 90 degrees. So always note the angles that you have. If the angle is not 90 degrees, it's not horizontal, or it's not vertical, then that force is an oblique force. All right, so for this force, we convert it into two components. This force, we don't convert, this force, we don't convert. But the easiest way that we do that, in order to, for us to answer this question, is to answer all of this. We will first calculate the sum of the horizontal forces. Horizontal, all the forces that are going either to the right we said is positive going to the left is negative so horizontal is in that direction going to the right positive going to the left is negative when we look at this oblique force i will start with this oblique force this force uh, forms a triangle like this this is 10 this is 60 the horizontal force is this part now when we do our three ratios we'll find that this is the adjacent adjacent side this is the opposite side for the adjacent side, we'll be using cos, trig ratios, hypotenuse and cos, will be uh, hypotenuse and adjacent, you'll be using cos as your ratio. Okay, so we'll say for the horizontal, what we have is 10 cos, the angle that we have, 60 degrees. Then we go for this force, 30, we add to 30. Now, keep in mind, these are forces, they should have direction. So if the 10 cos, 60 is going to the right which means it assumes that direction which is a positive 10. we look at 30 30 is also going in that direction it's a positive 30. if we add 70 to this one we ask ourselves is 70 going to the left or to the right in those two directions 70 does not have a horizontal uh, component so it will remain a zero for this 70. You can include the zero there or you can just leave it out because it doesn't affect our calculations. Then we can calculate this uh, in our calculators. Make sure your calculator is in degrees when you calculate those ones. You can punch that in your calculators, but just understand how your calculator works. Your calculator might need brackets for these uh, 10 plus 60 because this is one number, okay? So which is 10 cos 60 gives us 35, okay, 35 newtons. Now this 35 newtons is a positive 35, which means this is our direction, it is going to the right, or we can say it is going to the east direction. So we have only resolved all these one, two, three, we have resolved them into a horizontal force, which is this force. Then we go to the, sum of the vertical forces 
vertical forces it's either going up or going down if it's going down it's a negative if it's going up it's a positive so again we'll start with the 10 10 is going up but we are looking at this force the vertical component of that 10 which is 10 sine 60 using our trig ratios then we go to this 30 is 30 going up or 30 going down it's a zero for this guy because it's not going up it's not going anywhere we might as well leave it out of our calculations because it does not affect anything then we look at 70 70 is going straight downwards so this guy is going to assume a negative value or you can as well just say minus minus 70 since it's going downwards then we can calculate all of this the zero does not affect our, our calculations so what we say is 10 sine 60 We get a negative 61,34. Okay, it's a 3397, but if we round off the 7, you will end us up with 4 newtons. Uh, 0.34 newtons. Now, since it's a negative, this is 61,34 newtons going to the negative sign, which is a downwards force or a south. But you don't need to write both of these, just choose one. If you use if you choose down, then just write down. Uh, same thing here. If you choose east, just write east. You don't have to write both of those um, uh, directions. So what has happened is we have analyzed all this force. We have reduced all these forces into these two forces. We have 35 newtons going to the right, we have 30 newtons going downwards. All these two forces have been summed up in just two directions which is either east which is going to the east and going downwards all these forces can be redrawn as according to this we have 35 newtons we have 61,34 newtons going downwards so these three forces one two three and this two forces, these two forces, this is exactly what is happening there. We have found the sum of the horizontal, we have found the sum of the uh, vertical forces. So we can even now forget about these forces and just focus now our new diagram, which is this force. We have two forces. Now, remember what we are doing? We said <clears throat> if this force starts, when this force ends, the other force picks up, then we connect those two uh, forces. All right, so we can do that so that it gives us our direction, gives us a good triangle. So if I start with 35, 35 goes in that direction, 35 newtons. Where 35 ends, the other force goes downwards. So the other force will go downwards, which is then 61,34. From your starting point to your ending point, we can as well this will be our resultant. It forms a good triangle, a right angle triangle. Therefore, our resultant is gonna be the sum of the horizontal components you square plus the vertical components you square, which we have 35 square plus 61,34. Do not forget to square those values, then you find the square root of those. So we have 35 square plus 61,34 square. We end up with 70,623 newtons. Okay. So this is our resultant. And then for our direction, we can calculate for this angle. But bear in mind that this angle that we calculate here, if we put our compass at our starting point, this would be north, this would be west, this would be south. Going this side, this is our east. So whatever angle that we will get here is going to start with east, turning towards the south. So it's going to be east-south, okay? Which is not a problem. If we look at this, according to this angle, this one is the opposite. This longest side is your hypotenuse. This short one uh, connected to our theta, this is your adjacent. So whichever trig ratio that you choose, you can choose either tan, Theta is equal to tan inverse, tan is equal to our, our, our opposite, 
which is 61.34 over our adjacent 35 and it will give us an angle of just a second there we have 61.34 over 35 gives us 60,291 degrees. Now this angle, like we said, this angle, it will bear the direction to say our angle is east 60,291 degrees towards the south. Okay, then this is our direction. So we have finally calculated for the resultant. You can use this angle, it still finds not a problem. Or if you want, you can choose to say, I need a southeast direction, then you minus 90 from that. All right, but we'll discuss that on another day. So we can therefore say our direction, our resultant, now to answer our first question, resultant is equals to 70,623 newtons east you write your angle 60,291 degrees towards the south okay this is our resultant we get our full six marks after doing all those steps we have answered the first question now for the second question the question says determine the equilibrium equilibrium as we said last time is a force equal in magnitude to the resultant by acting in the opposite direction so to determine the equilibrium there is no calculation that we do but the only thing that we will do is get the value equilibrium that will equals to 70,63 newtons then the direction opposite of east is west again you don't do any calculations regarding the direction from the angle you just pick the angle as it is degrees then the opposite of south will be north then you have determined your angle, your equilibrium, the magnitude and direction, then you are done. Calculating for the equilibrium is you first need to calculate for what? For the resultant, get the value, get the correct direction, then you opposite the directions, then you get your equilibrium. Alright, until next time.